watching Sports Beat. The Murdoch Automotive No Regrets Play of the Game. Play action, looking for a wide open receiver, and it's a touchdown. Well, the Bears' Mitchell Trubisky had himself a game. Six touchdowns against the Bucks, 19 of 26, 354 yards. As the Bears thumped Tampa, 48 to 10. Trubisky, it's our play of the game. Did not see that coming today. No, we did not. Uh, final day of baseball's regular season now. Four teams in the National League knew that they were in the playoffs. They just didn't know where they would be there. Yeah, the Rockies, one of them. They've never won an NL West division title. They could make history with a win and a Dodgers loss today. Rockies didn't waste any time taking care of business. First inning, Nolan Arenado with a two-run shot. His 36th of the year. Let's go to the seventh inning with the Rockies up 7-0. Guess who? Arenado again. Goes yard again. His 37th. That leads the National League. The Rockies go back-to-back. -back. Trevor Story. And the route was on. The Rockies do their part with a 12 0 win. Okay, so now the Dodgers needing to beat the Giants to force a game tomorrow for the NL West title. Dodgers explode in the third. Brian Dozier, high, hard, and far to left field. Two run shot. Dodgers score seven runs in the third inning. Then in the fifth, Max Muncy munches this one in the McCovey Cove. It's 12 0 Dodgers, so no drama in this one either. Rich Hill taking care of business on the mound, strikes out seven over seven shutout innings. Dodgers beat the Giants 15 to nothing and will play the Rockies tomorrow for the NL West title. Loser is the wild card. This is going to be fun. Same situation in the NL Central. Cubs and Brewers tied for first. Some nervous moments for Cubs fans at Wrigley. Down 2 nothing to the Cardinals, but they rally. Anthony Rizzo drives in a run. His 100th RBI gave the Cubs a lead for good. They score four more runs in the fifth for insurance. Wilson Contreras with a two-run shot over the Ivy. The Cubs take care of business. Now, let's check in with the Brewers. Yeah, with the Cubs win, Brewers got to beat the Tigers to force a matchup with Chicago tomorrow for the NL Central Division title. Bottom of the first, Milwaukee's Mike Moustakas. Line shot into right. That brings in a run. Moose does it. 2 0 Brewers. Then in the fourth. Still so energetic. That ball is hit on the barrel. It is deep. Castellanos back. Jesus Aguilar makes it 3 0, and the Brew Crew, Jeremiah, sliding into a matchup with the Cubbies tomorrow for the NL Central title. Well played. Thank you. Taylor Ward launches one out toward left field. Martini going back to the warning track near the wall. Leaps up. Go Drive home safely. What a way to send off Mike Sosha, former Salt Lake B. Taylor Ward with a walk off home run. It's the final game for Mike Sosha, their manager, after 19 seasons in Anaheim, the longest current tenure in the majors. So if the old B's manager who moved up to the Angels might we'll get see, a crack. Um, uh, Chavez, Eric Chavez, I think, is yeah. also a candidate for that. We'll see, see if uh, Keith Johnson gets a shot at that. I'm sure there will be an announcement shortly. They've already made the moves to This was get no there. surprise. We knew yeah. this for a couple months, exactly. but it came official today. All right. Well, one week down, about 32 more weeks to go for the Utah Jazz. But what a week it was. It was a lot of fun. Media day, training camp, meet the team night in the first preseason game. This team's going to be a lot of fun this year. Let's rewind. Grayson Allen comes off a pick and roll into a tough three and hit it off the bounce. O'Neal quickly to Allen, catch and shoot three. Grayson Allen, Grayson Allen hits his third three of the game from the right side. And the Jazz go up 53 to 19. A little playmaking. Four does exactly that and finds a cutting Grayson Allen. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> About as exciting as my English. <laughs> Lob to the rim, Gobert. We might see that too. Jazz are 10 of 17. Lob to the rim, Rudy Gobert, slam dunk. Donovan Mitchell delivers the dime. The Jazz, you'll see a lot of this. Crowder fires the three and hits. Ricochets all the way around. And Dante gets it back. Hands to AB, jacked it with one hand. Wow. You realize Donovan lost that 
that shooting competition. Donovan didn't win. So don't cheer for him anymore. Bradley Pick steps behind the three and nails it. Love that. Cephalosha drives through the defense to the cup. Missed the layup. Udo jams it through. Throws it back out to George Niang. Three from the right side. It's good. Another three for the Jazz tonight. Yes. Hey, well done, Wyatt. Hope you uh, continue to do well in your treatment with cancer. All right, former Utah Mr. Basketball Frank Jackson seeing his first NBA action. Pelicans visiting the Chicago Bulls. You remember Frank missed last year due to injury. He played 19 minutes tonight, was 5 of 14 from the field, but 4 of 8 from the three-point line. That's what he's going to provide for the Pelicans this year. He finished with 16 points and 6 rebounds. His team lost to the Bulls by 12, but who cares? It's preseason basketball. Exactly. Okay, Jeremiah, this is kind of tough to get used to, isn't it, right there? Huh? It's just weird. LeBron James making his debut in a Laker jersey, getting his new teammates involved. That's not weird. Brandon Ingram, no, this isn't either. Then another new Laker, Rajon Rondo, to LeBron, who drops a three. LeBron finished with nine points in 15 minutes, three rebounds, three assists. For me, Kyle Kuzma played 24 minutes, dropped in 15 points. All right, now to the college football Saturday. Yes, we must do it. <laughs> the youths were hoping that their bye week would help them figure out the problems on offense. And yes, it did help a little bit yesterday at Washington State. Yeah, the offense performed much better, scoring 24 points, but none in the fourth quarter when it really mattered. A quarter that turned into a nightmare for the youths. Too many penalties, too many mistakes. Now has the youths at 0-2 in the Pac-12. Put away by Dragicevic. Again, the angles nicely. Covey. Oh, Covey got a little room there. Covey's got a chance. Covey's got a big time chance. There is a flag down back where he started. He finishes in the end zone, pending the flag. During the return, the legal block in the back. Number two, receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Takes the snap, back pedals the pass. Throws it down the sideline. Looking for a man, it's caught. Up the sideline, back inside. Winston. Up the sideline, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. And again, the student section roaring for the Kooks on fourth down. And it is Moss, and he is going to get it. And the Utes stay alive. Not by much, but he did get the first. And we're under three minutes now. Huntley to pass. Blitz coming. Outside, caught by Moss. Makes a man miss. And what do we have? A flag flies. Higher of the play. Ball start. Here we go, fourth and ten. Huntley to pass. Stepping, throwing, caught. Flag flies in the open field. Covey, 15, 10, 5, down to the six-yard line. But let's see what the penalty kidding. is. Holding. Number 50, offense. Play action. Tyler stepping up. Tyler throwing it outside, and it's incomplete. And that'll be the ball game. On homecoming here in Pullman, the Washington State Cougars come from behind late in the fourth quarter to beat Utah 28 to 24. Utah now 2 and 2 and 0 and 2 in Pac-12 play. All right, our guys are back here to break this one down for us. Stevenson Sylvester, former Ute, former Cougar David Nixon. Ask and you shall receive. Fans <laughs> wanted to see more run game, David. That's exactly what they got. They got that offense going. That's right. Everyone's been clamoring for Troy Taylor to get the offensive run game going. And first drive, they got a healthy dose of it. Yeah, here you go. You got Zach Moss. Give him the ball. You got him the ball 30 times in this game. Here, I want you guys to pay attention to. There's seven defenders in the box because of Zach Moss is in the box. So they have an extra defender because the quarterback is not accounted for. But here on this next play on why Huntley scores on this touchdown is because they spread him out, which gives the defender out. So they take out one of those defenders. They do the same jet sweep fake to Covey here. And it's wide open for Tyler for the nice, what is it, 25-yard touchdown? Easy pickings for Utah. So Utah's offense got the ball rolling, mainly because of their run Great game. kick-out blocks right here by this old line. I mean, it's just a perfect play call by Troy. I mean, look at how well this is blocked up. Nobody's there to, to, to defend it. They keep rolling. Tyler Huntley got Utah to a fast start. But now we got to talk about the defense. <laughs> Corian Ballard, tough night for him. 
Just, I mean, kind of missed assignments is really the miscue for this Utah defense. 456 passing yards for that Washington State offense is crazy. But here, because he got the interception early in the game, he thinks he's going to go for the ball. As the free safety, you are the last line of defense. You cannot gamble. He gambles right there. The receiver catches an easy touchdown. He has to go attack that ball. So he either runs into the receiver or he doesn't. And then here. I mean, you see the situation, right? Four and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. You got to keep the ball in front of you. You have to lead. 24 21 Missed you tackle. cannot allow a big play like this to happen yeah it's uh it's a few things and they threw the ball 56 60 times during this game so these dbs were a little tired but here you can see Minchu here is staring down his receiver as man-to-man -man coverage and opposed safety he's telling you where he's going just go Ballard hesitates, and for that half a second or second of hesitation, he gets behind. He doesn't get to tackle the catch. Should tackle the catch right there. Oof. But look, his momentum, because of look how he is, we want you to be squared up by the time you get to this position so you can either slow him down so Chase Hansen can come get him, or you make the tackle. He doesn't do either. They're both chasing him all the way It doesn't have to be zone. pretty. You, ju you just got to get him down. Just, just little, Like him you down. said, you got to buy some time, wait for your other guys to rally and stop him. But this one for the U fans, man, this causes some hard heartache right here because a huge punt return for Covey and what's going to happen it's going to be called back because of a penalty that when you go ah. back and look at it a little closer I don't think so oh man this penalty was huge I was down on the sideline so I was juiced looking for him I was actually pissed if you guys heard me on the radio I'm like he didn't do it he didn't do it but look on this angle it looks like his hands are on him right and then if you look from the other angle he didn't touch him yeah. at all he did exactly what he was coached to do he put he looks he's in position he puts his hands up does not touch the guy at all negates the whole play they start to drive back on the 35 yard line and kills everything so utah fans were sorry this penalty shouldn't have happened bad call by the refs Penalties, you can't shoot yourself in the foot, especially when you're on the road in a big Pac-12 oh. game. And they That's still crazy. had a chance in the final minute on fourth down, two penalties. Killed them. Negated the fourth down, like the third down, uh, fourth down and, conversion. And, and life doesn't easy, get easier. You head on the road to yeah. Stanford, who just lost against Notre Dame. You got to get ready. That's probably the fifth best team in the North, and you lost to them. It's not going to get any easier for no. Not going to get any easier. Now, for BYU, they knew it would be a difficult challenge at number 11, Washington. But, Jeremiah, I don't think they knew... It would be this difficult. Yeah, they got, they got Washington's best on Saturday. The win at Wisconsin gave the Cougar faithful hope that they could do the same in Seattle, but it didn't take long to learn who the best team was. Yeah, it started early, Jeremiah. It got bad quickly for the Cougs. They couldn't stop the run. Salvan Ahmed taking it in for the 7-0 lead. Then it was Miles Gaskin's turn. Six yards to up the lead to 14-0. Now, in the final minute of the half, as BYU was trying to play it safe and run out the clock, this... Set the tone, really, going into halftime. Lapini Katoa fumbles, recovered by Washington, the Cougar 24. Then a couple of plays later, Jake Browning, no pressure, a lot of room to run, in for the touchdown for a 21-0 lead at the half. Cougars only touchdown coming in the final minute of the fourth quarter after the Huskies fumble the punt, and they lose 35-7. All right, David and Sly are back to break down the Cougars. Guys, no other way to put this. The Huskies just simply beat the Cougars in every way here. Yeah, it was a horrible game for BYU. It was bad all the way around. But one of the things they couldn't do, they couldn't get Jake Browning under control. Why yeah. was he so effective? Yeah, listen, he threw for 277 yards. They were 75% on third down completion Ooh. percentage. But a lot of it came down to BYU's front four. They struggled throughout the night getting pressure on Jake Browning. BYU's going to rush four, and he's going to have all day to throw it. But one thing I want to point out is this BYU defense. They show a two-shell but they move to a cover three. What happens here is Austin Lee has his eyes back. He's carrying the player up the seam. He's got to get his hips back to the player coming down into his zone on the defense. Unfortunately, he doesn't get his eyes back, and it's a big completion for Washington. And that's what happened throughout the entire night. BYU just couldn't get pressure. Not only were they killing him through the air, but they were killing him on the ground, too. I tell you what, Washington rushed for 187 yards, and a lot of it was to the edges. You know, I thought BYU could do a good job of containing, but we go back and look at it, and BYU struggled. And once again, this play, you look at the fumble. BYU's got six, seven guys around the ball. This is a microcosm of what happened with BYU's night right here. There's a fumble. BYU should pick it up, and what happens? UW's offensive center comes down and recovers the fumble. Get this 12, was, extra 12 yards they, there. BYU just couldn't get anything going right their way. It was, it was a tough night all around. Yeah, and, and it looked like their offense couldn't get any rhythm either. Yeah, so BYU's obviously gone with the fly sweep. They're trying to do a lot of misdirection, attack the edges. Oh. But UW does a fantastic job. They run a cover two scheme and watch the corner right here. He comes up and blows up Matt Bushman. And what does that do? 
it makes Hefo try to cut it up early. In doing so, he didn't expect his big old tight end to get pushed back, and he fumbles and drops on it. It's a three-yard loss. But BYU can never get their run game going. They rushed for only 34 yards on the night. Yeah, but there was a bright spot in the BYU offense. Lapini Katoa, he had himself a day. Katoa led the team in rushing and led the team in receiving. I love this play right here. You look at the situation, third and 23. Jeff Grimes dials up a perfect screen blitz or screen call. What you had right there is you had six guys showing a look. You had the two backers drop out. It allows time for Mangum to throw it to Katoa. You got Christensen up on the, on the linebacker. Katoa mm -hmm. makes the first guy miss, and he scampers out for a first down. So that it, if there's anything bright from this game is that Katoa really emerged. Squally Canada, he's been kind of in and out with his injuries. But BYU did a great job blocking up front, picking up a crucial third down. So going into this, week, this week's game against Utah State, you try to rely on plays like that, where you see glimpses of brilliance from a young guy like Katoa. You try to lean on that because I'll tell you what, the rest of that game was ugly. Be interesting to see how the Aggies and Matt Wells, how they defense what worked for the Cougars, which wasn't much, actually. It, it's going to be a very interesting game. I and mean, you look at Utah State, it's had a great year so far. Explosive offense, BYU's defense struggled to stop Washington. So something has to give in this game. That's why I think it's so intriguing. Friday night in Provo. Yeah. I've been waiting for this all season long. Can't wait to see how this goes. The conference game. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, is this the best catch of the week? We are coming back with the great clip. Next. College football breakdown brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen. All right, including today, four matches remaining for Rail Salt Lake in the regular season, and a lot on the line this afternoon as they hooked up with Sporting KC yeah. in Kansas City. RSL only a point in front of the Galaxy for the sixth and final playoff spot in the West. Any points exactly. on the road would be huge. Huge. And of course we know this is also a rivalry game. We hate sporting Kansas City. RSL off to a great start. Corey Baird, what a rookie season he's had. I love their barbecue though. RSL up one other early ninth minute. That is good. We like the KC barbecue. We don't like sporting KC. Now we've made that clear. <laughs> 51st minute, SKC's Johnny Russell to Ike Apara, the header. Oh, that evens the score one. And RSL has to settle for one point. They're still in six in the West with just three matches left in the season. Great clips of the week. All right, John Carlos Stanton of the Yankees hits one out at Fenway Park. Of course, you know the guy that is going to catch it in the field. He's going to give it back, right? Nice throw, dude. Watch the ball, though. He ran the ball. It hits John Carlos <laughs> Stanton as he's rounding second. Yeah, give him credit. Nice throw. Sign him up. That guy's got a hose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sam Houston State's Davion Davis. Check this out. The one-hander, and I'm not going to say it's a Odell Beckham Jr. impersonation. I'm not. That was just a cool one-handed catch. I think it was even better. You got the fingertips there you on go. it. It's okay. pretty impressive. You know what? We got a theme here. Let's continue okay. with the one-handed catches. This is Penn State's Jawan Johnson. That is awesome. In a huge game. Basically oh. the same kind of catch. Uh, we're seeing this all the time now. It's not even that big of a deal well, Let's anymore. get another one. Boise State's John Hightower going high on the tower <laughs> and reaching down and picking it up. Such a great catch, it knocked his shoe off. Oh, man. Well, better knocking his socks off. All right, Louisiana Tech's Rashid Bonnet. Again, this isn't a one-handed catch, but it was still pretty good. Goes over the top of his receiver <laughs> and flips. Defender, I should say. All right, and listen to the play-by-play, -play, the announcer here on this interception. It's awesome. He's got a man in the end zone, and he's picked up, and he's going to be brought out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 40, 35, 25, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. DeAndre Evans. <laughs> Was that Bobby Bowden doing the play-by-play -play on that radio right there? Because I think our guy just cousin. buckled up our chin straps he's, and we just had a good old time on the football field. He's good at counting two, five, four, three, two, one, touchdown. All right. <laughs> Best play-by-play -play ever. Uh, Best homer so awesome, call I've ever heard. That, that was awesome. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Five, four, three. Two, one, he can count. All right. It's not easy. That sounded like Bobby Bowden, the old Florida State head coach. All I right. knew that's what he's doing in retirement. Well, you voted. Now we get to unveil your choice for best of the week. Time to go. Here's a third down. And intercept. Hey. Football weekend. Could this be the best play? 
Ten Come on back you. now, you hear? It's a Piesman. Give me some Southern Five, ribs. four, three, two, one. All right, every Saturday night, 6 o'clock on our Game Night Live High School Football Show, we give you four choices for the top play from the previous week. And then we ask you to go to the Twitter page at KSL Sports to vote for your favorite. Now, here's your choice. This is the one that won. This is the best of the week. Pretty good, too. Spanish Forks, Parker Swenson. Jeremiah, give us... <laughs> now we need a southern call on this one. He's in the grass. He couldn't pull him down. He froze it up in the air. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a touchdown. You know what? That does sound a little like Harry Carey from the South. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, right, this Friday night, our Game Night Live crew will be at Northridge High School. They host the Davis Darts and Jeremiah. This is a crucial game for playoff positioning. You slip up a little bit, you could be out of the top four in this region. Game Night Live will be broadcast live on our KSL TV app. If you don't have the app, it's very simple. You can go download it for free and watch the game live. Are we already in week eight of the high school football season? Can you season? believe it? Yeah, eight, nine, ten. That means three weeks uh, remaining in regular season. Okay, wow. All right, also uh, every Saturday at 6 o'clock on uh, Game Night Live, we package the best moments from the week all into 90 seconds. We want you to see it now. We're going to leave you with this. It's the highlight reel. Enjoy. See y'all. Shakes it, bakes it. He's going to tear up the sideline. He could.